Okay then my friends, so we've seen already two types of direct HTTP triggers on request and on call. Now these were direct triggers that ran basically when we told them to, either by us using an endpoint or by calling the function from our code. Now there are other types of triggers called background triggers and these are events that occur in the background of our app or website. So they're not directly called but when certain events occur, they can trigger a cloud function to run. Now there's many different types of background events or background triggers. We could have Firestore database triggers when new records are added or deleted maybe, authentication triggers, analytics triggers, cloud storage triggers, and much more. Now the one we're gonna look at first is an authentication trigger. And in our case, it's gonna be when a new user registers so when that event occurs we're going to invoke a cloud function to do something so the first thing i like to do is delete all of the old cloud functions that we created in older tutorials because they were kind of test functions just to get us into the practice of creating them deploying them and testing them out so they don't really actually do anything useful and for that reason i'm going to just chuck them in the bin so let's delete all of that first of all and in fact if we go to the index.html file there's a button down here that we don't really need anymore um, it's at the bottom of the section and it's this button which was calling the function to say hello and in fact, while I'm at it, the app.js, all of this stuff right here, we don't need that either. That was us calling that on-call function, and that was just a test. So let's get rid of that as well. Now then, we want to create now a cloud function, a Firebase function, which is going to react to an authentication change. And first, that authentication change is going to be a new user signing up. So it will be Firebase creating a new user. So let's do a comment and say auth trigger and this is going to be for a new user sign up. Now under that again we need to say exports and then give this a name. I'm going to call it new user sign up. You can call it what you want. And then that's equal to functions and we used to say dot https and then dot either request or on call. Now we don't want to do that anymore. It's not an HTTPS function anymore. This is going to be an authentication triggered function. So we say functions dot auth and then dot user. So this is based on something happening with the user. And in our case, it's going to be on create, meaning when a new user is created, I want you to fire a callback function. And this callback function takes in that user as a parameter now because there's only one parameter i'm going to get rid of those parentheses i know i don't always do that it's just because i forget and i get into the habit of creating these uh, functions with parentheses for some reason but anyway inside this function all i'm going to do is say console.log and remember that's logged over here if we take a look at the functions go to functions and in a second, you're going to see this logs panel right here. It's logged right here. And all I'm going to do is log out a message which says user created, comma, and then I'm going to output the user email. So user.email because we get access to the email of that user and also the user.uid. That is a unique identifier for that user. Firebase automatically creates that when a new user signs up fortunately so that's all i'm doing in this case a new user signs up we're listening for that event so when a user is created we fire this function we take in that user that's created and we log the details to the console now i'm going to do one more which is the exact opposite and that is going to be when a user is deleted so instead of on create it's going to be on delete so this is going to listen for users being deleted from the app and we can do that ourselves from the back end and it's going to fire a function when that happens and again we can take in the user which is deleted and i'm going to change this to deleted from created and i'm going to change this comment as well up here to user deleted and i'm going to say right down here user deleted okay so now we have these two functions. They both have an authentication trigger, one for creation of users, one when we delete a user. 
So let's see if these work. So first of all, I'm going to open up the terminal and I'm going to say Firebase deploy only functions. And first of all, watch what happens. Because we deleted the old functions up that were here, it's going to ask us in a second if we actually want to delete those functions from Firebase at the back end as well. And it says right here, would you like to proceed with deletion? So I want to, so yes, and press enter. And it's going to delete those functions that were deleted from this file from Firebase over here as well. So if we take a look at the dashboard, these functions, it's going to delete in a second. We can already see that these have been deployed, but I am going to wait until this is all complete before we test it out. Otherwise, there could be some errors. Okay, so once that is done, let me go over here and refresh first of all, make sure those other functions have been deleted, which they have. So now I'm going to go to logs just to make sure everything's been deployed. Okay, new user sign up and user deleted. So first of all, I'm going to try the user deleted function. Now to do that, I'm going to open this up in a new tab, authentication, and we should have access to all of the users currently registered for our app. Now I'm going to delete this one right here, mario at the netninja.co.uk. So let me go to delete that account, press delete, and then behind the scenes, this should automatically trigger that cloud function. Now it might take a short while to do this. So let's just wait a second and refresh over here just to see if that user is logged to the console over here. Okay, and we can see right here, user deleted, mario at the netninja.co.uk and the UID of that user. And by the way, you can see all of the UIDs in this column in the authentication tab. Okay, so that's worked. We do have some kind of warning right here or an error in fact, and we'll come to that in a second. But first, let me try out the other cloud function, which is to create a new user. So let me go to the front end. I'm going to refresh over here first of all, then go to register and I'm going to register with peach at the net ninja.co.uk Mario character, by the way, not the fruit. And the password is going to be test one, two, three or register. And hopefully this will work. Now, if we go to our cloud functions, I'm going to refresh again. Again, it might take a few seconds to work. So you might not see this automatically as I don't. But now we can see it down here, user created peach at the net ninja.co.uk and the UID for that user. Now, like I said, we are getting an error right here. And this error says function returned undefined and it expected a promise of value and the same thing down here. And that's because in these cloud functions right here, we're not returning any kind of value. Now, remember when we use those HTTP triggers, either on call or on request, we sent a response directly back to the clients, either using the return keyword or by using the response object. Now, in the case of using background triggers, we're not sending a response to the client because the client has not requested anything. So we don't need to send a response, but we still need to return a value. And in the case of background triggers, it's normal to return a promise at the end. So we'll address that in the next video.